I'm out to kill tonight. That is, if you're a fish. Hey, Son of Blue Darkfold here, and I'm not really going to kill anybody unless you are tonight's dinner. And tonight's dinner is going to be blackened catfish, and we are going to cook it on our ready seasoned cast iron skillet. And this thing is heavy. So, what do you need to make blackened catfish? Well, the first thing you need is catfish fillets. The second thing you need is some good old Chef Paul fruit on blackened sea fish. Or sea, blackened redfish magic is what we're going to be using. And I did have some in my collection. I was kind of questioning whether or not I did. So, what do you say we begin with our catfish? Okay, what you need to do is get yourself a pair of tongs. And what we're going to do is take the catfish and we are going to use this as a rub. And we want to get this blackened seasoning all over. Now I want to be kind of easy going on this seasoning because I don't have that much left. So I'm going to use this as sparingly as possible. So cover it once, flip it over, and cover it again. That's good. Slide it aside, reach for the next one. Drop it down, don't even have to rinse it. Just take your seasoning. Okay. Turn it over and repeat for the other side. Alright. Nice and covered that way. Now, before we go on, let me show you what you're going to need to do with your skillet. First, I'm going to turn this on to where it's really, really hot. You're going to need to turn this on the highest setting possible. Good. Now, next thing we're going to do is take some butter. And what this butter is going to do is it's going to help with the blackening process. It's already non-stick. But what that butter is going to do is it's going to help with the blackening process. Now, first thing first, we need to get this butter to melt. And just slide that around. Oh, when this thing heats up, that butter will be melting. You want to make sure too that uh, when you're done using this cast iron skillet that nothing pools because and nothing stays pooled so practice good maintenance on your cast iron skillets don't just cook something and then leave it for somebody else to clean because that somebody else may never clean it so if you're the one who uses it you be the one to clean it because it's your cast iron skillet and while that is heating up what I'm going to do here is going to continue along with our fish everybody say it now fish Yes, we love our fish, especially when it's blackened catfish. Guarantee we're going to have some good fish tonight. And this doesn't take very long to cook, neither. But it is a darn good recipe, especially if you use Chef Paul Prudhomme seasonings. Because I love Chef Paul Prudhomme, what he does to seasoning, and other people are afraid to ask. And I'm not afraid to ask. If I ever meet Chef Paul Prudhomme, I'm going to ask him, what do you do to your seasoning to make it taste oh so good? And you're probably going to say, well, that there's a Southern Louisiana secret there, son. That's probably what he's going to tell me. Other than that, Chef Paul Prudhomme is okay in my seasoning book. There we go. There we go. Now, get this all over, because you want this all over your fish. You're wrong, Deed. You want this all over. All over your fish. Yep, the butter is getting ready. Good, good, good. What you want is nice and smoky. Let's give it a little more butter there. That is a big skillet, so you're going to need a little extra nope, butter. Put that in there. Yeah, what the hay. A little extra won't kill you. Oh, yes, actually, it may kill you, but at least you can enjoy the food while you're still here, right? Right? All right, let's take a look at our butter. Woo, now that is hot. That's about the right amount of butter, too. Okay. Now, that handle is going to be real hot after a while, so watch your hand when you're working with cast iron. We're going to take these tongs and we're going to make use of them. So what we're going to do, and wait for that butter to heat back up again. When you hear it sizzling, back up again. Matter of fact, always remember your oven mitt when you handle cast iron. Yes, the fire is still on. And just move that around a little bit. Okay. Now, we're going to take our tongs and we're going to just lay down a fish right here. And we're going to lay down another fish right here. And we're going to keep laying down fish there and one 
there. All right. We got two rounds of fish to go. So what we're going to do is get out a metal spatula. So you want one of these for your cast iron skillets. Why? Because you can scrape really good and you won't have to worry about harming the surface of your cast iron skillet. Because it's cast iron. It can take it. Don't worry. In fact, it needs the push on the metal spatula. And what we're going to do is separate these pieces a little bit. We are going to cook each side for approximately 30 to 45 seconds. We're going to flip it over to see how far along we're coming along. Cook the other side for about 45 seconds. Then we're going to flip them around until they're blackened. We're going to make sure that they're not burned. They will just be blackened. Okay. Turn it over. That's what we're looking for. That's blackening. It's getting there. That's getting there. Flip it over there. There you go. That's blackening. This one may not so because it's not directly over the flame. But there we go. That's starting to blacken up nicely. Yeah. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to turn this on so we can have some size. Now, what goes good with quiche? Nothing but the best. Shells and white cheddar. So, I'm going to boil this up now and put it into a medium flame. And while that's cooking, while that's searing, 45 seconds. That's looking good. Let me just flip that back over. Let's check these out. Okay, you need a little more time. All right. No problem. Now, while these are cooking up, and you can smell, mmm, that is strong. That's the beauty of cooking in a cast iron skillet. The smells from the kitchen will be a lot stronger, too. We're going to take a lemon, and this is going to be our garnish. I'm going to show you how to put together a garnish with lemon. And that's going to be in a moment, but first, let's pay attention to our fish. Because we got a lot of fish going on, and also helps to have an extra plate to set the blackened fish onto. All right. And are you still coming along? You are still on eight. Yes. Good. Let's check this one out. Oh, come on, flip. There we go. Good. Looking good. How about you? You're looking all right. Yeah, you're not over direct flame, so. All right. So let that cook up a little longer. Let's see if I can turn you up a little bit more. Okay, there we go. Turn up as hot as you can for these cast iron skillets. Because believe me, they can take it if it's over a gas flame. But if it's over an electric flame, you got to remember there's hot spots, and that can easily crack your cast iron. So if you can avoid it, don't use a cast iron skillet on an electric stove. Use it on a gas stove, or if you don't have access to a gas stove, go out and back and set a fire in your barbecue pit, and then put the cast iron skillet on there. And if you don't have a barbecue pit, then, I don't know, maybe you're not cooking with uh, cast iron. Maybe you're not eating good with cast iron. Good cooking, good eating, that all goes hand in hand. If you want a cast iron skillet, you got to have the equipment to accommodate it. Because if you don't have a gas range, you need to get a barbecue pit or a barbecue grill. That is the best way, other than cooking right over an open fire, that you can cook on a cast iron skillet that does not involve a stove top. Now, and keep on flipping it. Just be very careful when you do, because you really got to get underneath and make sure you try not to knock any of the blackening seasoning off your fish. Yeah, that needs to cook on that side, so this is this one's turning out nicely. This one might have to move over to the middle while I put these other three, one, two, three fish into that skillet. But first, before I add any more fish, I'm going to add more butter. And I'm not going to wipe it clean, I'm not going to rinse it, I'm just going to take it as is and add more butter, because then all of this flavor is going to come together the way a true Cajun meal should. So that's what's going to happen in this here cast iron skillet, I guarantee. But first, I'm going to poke and jab at you to see if you are coming. There we go. There we go. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That's good. That is good looking to me. That is good looking too. Mm, 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 mm. Uh-huh. 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 Y'all cooking up nicely. And 
Now they get, they're coming apart over here. That's not good. And I've also knocked some over here, so it's very particular. But that is a big piece, too. Look at the size of that mammoth. Cook it on that side a little more and maybe even move it toward the center. All right. Just keep flipping it and popping it until you are satisfied with the look of your catfish. Now, some people like it nice and blackened, other people like it lightly blackened. This looks good if you like it lightly blackened. If you want it a little more darker, then leave it on for a little while. You might get smoky, but that's the beauty part of cooking in a cast iron skillet. So, I'm going to go ahead and remove these fish because they look good enough to eat. That is a good blackened catfish right there. Oops, look at that. I took just a whole bunch of that off of that. That's not good, so flip that over to where it looks nice. Nobody else has to know. Good. Look at that. Now we're gonna move this on up here. Yeah, yeah. Should be good, this little corner piece. You came off finally. Come on out of there. Get on out of there! Sometimes you gotta yell at your fish. Oh, that's good enough. That is good enough for me. Now, add more butter and continue. Look at that skillet. That is well used. Look at that. And add some more butter. And remember your oven mitt. Look at that. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Look at that butter. That's mixing up all them flavors nicely. Look at that. Yes, yes, we need more butter. That is not enough butter, we need more. Oh, because I'm using margarine. Margarine is not butter. A little extra though, because we're going over a lot of other stuff in there. Like excess fish and seasoning. There we go. Now we're about ready. Just wait for that red butter to red. Wait for that butter to melt the rest of the way, and don't handle that hot handle. Look at that butter just melting away. All right. Now, can you tell I love my cast iron skillets? I love cast iron skillets. Boy, I really, really love cast iron. I'm so glad that I got me a cast iron skillet. Now, I am having buku fun with my cast iron skillet. You will too. Move that out of the way. Move that up. There we go. Three more pieces, I guarantee. We is gonna have blackened catfish tonight. Now, if you're curious about what types of catfish you want to get, always get the fillets. Do not get the other type of catfish, the catfish nuggets. You don't, you can't do nuggets in there. They have to be fillets. Catfish nuggets is good for coating it and deep frying it. The fillets are what you use for a cast iron skillet. I'm going to wash this up and dry right there. We'll do this one too while that fish is cooking. Might as well get as much done as possible. That way they don't have to pile up in here. There we go. The other side there. Cleaning as we go here in the kitchen, I saw a good dog fold and the old pop is crew. Alright, rinse this off real good, nice black. And here we go. Okay, done and done. Put that right over there. Yeah, cover up the butter too. Yeah. Let's check out catfish and turn her over. Oh, look at that. Oh, even better. Oh, ho, ho, that triple play of beautiful catfish. Look at that blackened catfish. Oh, that is so good. That is so good. Oh my goodness, I am really in love with this skillet already and I just used it this once. Looks like my milk is boiling up, so I will now rinse and wash my tongs. Set those puppies aside. Well, I come over here and add shells and white cheddar to that rolled up pusa fudge. Be very careful not to not, oh yeah, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. I like it, I like it, I like it, look at that, I like it like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's another good one. Let's go three for three. What do you say? Flip this bad boy over. Oh, look at that color. 
Ah, I love it. I love plugging catfish in a cast iron skillet. Look at that color. You can't get that in a non-stick skillet. You just can't. And the smell is tremendously good. Oh, I love cast iron skillets. If you want to share the same excitement that I'm feeling right now, get a cast iron skillet. Make sure that your cast iron skillet is made by Lodge. Get the best brand, get Lodge. It's not as expensive, and it'll last you a lifetime if you take care of it. Now, nice. Do a little final once over on our black and catfish because we should be ready to go. Oh, yeah, we're ready to go. Look at that. Here on the plate. Yeah. Ooh, beautiful. Beautiful. Ah, a little bit more on this side and we'll be done. I'm gonna put the butter away now. And a few more seconds of that and let's check. That's better. There you have blackened catfish. Turn it off and let it cool. Yeah. Look at that blackened catfish. I love blackened catfish and you will too, especially if it's made in a cast iron skillet. And I know I've said cast iron skillet so many times in this episode, but what can I say? I'm excited. Now what you definitely want to do is drain off some of that excess oil from the butter or the margarine that we've used. I'm going to give this a little stir too. There we go. All right. All right. Now what you don't want to do is you don't want to put this right over into the water. Let this cool. Because I'll tell you why, all of that steam and all of that heat is going to burn you. And it's going to burn you in one way or another. So don't be, don't be too much in a rush to clean your cast iron skillets. Let it stay there, let it get cool. If you can pick it up by the handle, then you can pick it up and haul it over to the sink, scrape it off if you need to, re-season it, and then slide it away and use it like next time. But all you got to do is just heat it up, put some oil in it, take the paper towel and rub it around, you're done. Recording. And there's the ensemble. Black and catfish with, with white shells and cheddar. I like my white shells with Parmesan. I know we're mixing cultures. Italian with Cajun. Whoa, too much, too much. Hey, hey. Okay, I'll have to spread that around a little bit. When you get down to the bottom, it usually comes out in a huge cluster. <laughs> The hidden plate. The hidden plate. Don't see it. Shh, shh, shh. Don't tell anybody about it. It's a secret. It's hidden. And there you have blackened catfish and white shells and cheddar. Now, let's take a lemon and garnish this up. And what I like to do, the bigger the lemon you can find, the better. What you want to do is probably stray away from the solid white slices. What you're after is a beautiful presentation. Just take a lemon slice right there. And a lemon slice there. One, two, three. As thinly as possible, too. Or thinner. <laughs> I want it thinner. There we go. That's good and thin. Thinly as possible, you're using this as a garnish after all. And with the remainder, feel free to cut this into quarters so that you can put that there. A little smaller still. Waste not one, not, but try to make as much to accommodate. Plates. Now, not everybody's gonna get a lemon wedge, but oh yeah, they will. One, two, one, two, and one, two. There we go. Now I'm gonna add this. I'm gonna squirt this over my lemon, but to garnish, like I showed you before, you can cut from the middle down and twist it and put it over the top. And I think they look nice over the top of that. But before we do that, how about a little pinch of just good old parsley for color? Sprinkle it very lightly, just a few pinches of parsley over the top for color. Beautiful, lovely presentation there. And a little bit more. There you 
go. Lovely presentation, lovely meal, and it's all done with a cast iron skillet. You gotta make sure too that your uh, hands don't have any cuts on them when you handle lemon because lemon on, on sores or on cuts, woo, talk about a pain from hell. And then we're just gonna take the lemon, put a little parsley on top of the lemon too, that looks nice. Put a little lemon slice there, one there, two there, I should say, and two more up here. And there you have it. Blackened catfish a la sonic glue. And try it for yourself, but first get yourself a cast iron skillet if you want to do any good blackening. So, for cooking with Sonic Blue, this is Sonic Blue Dark Fault, and I'm going to enjoy me some blackened catfish. Oh, but first, let's see how well it tastes. i got to do a taste test. You see, Wolf Dog isn't here at the moment, so that means we can't torment him. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, it almost looks like a face, look at that. <laughs> looks like a face. That is a happy meal. Look at that. Look how happy that meal looks. Yay! I'm happy to be eaten! Okay, enough playing with my food. My mother told me never play with your food. Sometimes I never listen to her. You know, this tastes pretty good with lemon, too. And now, I want to try some of this black and catfish. See how well it came out. Mmm. Mmm. That's good. Mmm. Just like catfish should be. Mmm. Beautiful. Nice and spicy from the Chef Paul Prudhomme, or it could be from the Zatarans, because Zatarans uses lots of cayenne pepper in their blackening seafood. But. Chef Paul also makes some really great seasoning mixtures. I highly recommend Chef Paul Prudhomme over any other brand, including Zatarin's. I actually prefer Chef Paul Prudhomme seasoning, and you should too. So check it out in your local grocery store. Look for Chef Paul Prudhomme's seasoning magic. You got poultry magic, meat magic, seafood magic, and redfish blackening magic. So check them out in your local stores. You will be amazed by the flavor. And Every once in a while, I will feature my own mixture of seasonings. I already have in a couple of episodes. And those recipes are in the oldpopets.org website. Or you can just watch the videos on YouTube and take notes. You can do that too. I like this with lemon as well. So I'm putting lemon over everything in there. And there you have it. Blacking catfish. Now, let me try this one. Hot, but good. I'm going to let this sit for a while. So, that turned out really amazing. And if you think that I'm wrong, try it for yourself and let me know how well you do, too. If you're watching us on YouTube, feel free to leave a comment. Try it out at home and leave yourself a comment down there where you leave the comments. Even though people are real eager to try my recipes at home to see how well they turned out for them, I've always gotten back some positive feedback. But there could be some time or another where the feedback isn't so positive. And as long as you're true to heart about it and you're understanding about it, leave a comment or two, even if it's constructive. I can handle constructive criticism. Just don't troll my channel, because violators will be persecuted to the fullest extent of YouTube. Is that even possible? Well, assuming that it is impossible, well, I can't really go out and murder and mutilate and uh, set a good example for the other trolls out there, now can I? Well. If you leave a comment, I would be grateful, but I'd be even more grateful if it was a nice comment. Be nice, because children are sometimes watching us. And there's all we have time for today. I'm going to sit down and eat my meal. I'm pretty sure cameraman Kiba is getting sick of holding that camera. So from all of us to all of you at the Old Poppet Studio, happy eating. The first thing you want to do first is get a plate. And this is what we're going to uh, belch. No. <laughs> Up oh, there it is. I knew I had it. This stuff is wonderful stuff. Oh no, I'm running out. What am I gonna do when I have two more left? Two more fillets left to, oh no.
I knew I should have picked one up at the store. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Okay. Well, I might not have enough for the other two. That's all right. We can use other stuff. Oops. Put you over here. Ah, you. Get in there. Okay. We might not have any more Chef Paul fruit on, but that's okay. I still got Zatarans. And I still got other Chef Paul fruit on seasoning. In fact, I might actually use the seafood magic. But let me use up the rest of the Zatarans. I got butter burning in my cast iron skillet. It's got to be really, really, really hot. Shake that a little bit. Turn it over. Let it spread a little. And that's the end of the Zatarans. Yep, that's the end of the Zatarans. Finishing off with more Chef Paul Fruit Homes <laughs> seafood magic. Oh man. Just douse that on there like crazy, man. Flip it over and. Season. I'd be surprised you might actually make a mess of seasonings all over your counter, but that's alright. Seasoning is easy to clean up off your counter. There we go. We actually have some more Chef Seafood Magic to spare. Good, I'm gonna put you back. Unbelievable. Hurry up and cook, and I want me some blackened catfish, I guarantee it. If y'all ain't gonna blacken up, then I'm gonna stand here like a man cajun and yell at y'all. Guarantee y'all gonna be blackened it up nicely. So sometimes you have to yell at your food to show how serious you are and how serious of an appetite you really have for fish. 